Welcome to the Worldwide Center of Mathematics. Today, I'll be going over this week's problem of the week. For the full problem and solution transcript, you can see the link in the video of, on our YouTube channel. So this week's problem of the week asks, asks you to prove that the following set of three functions is linearly independent. So there are two different ways to do this that I put in the solution transcript. So I'll go, I will go over both ways. Uh, so the first way we can prove that these functions are linearly independent is by contradiction. So therefore, we assume that three, these three functions are linearly dependent. Therefore, there exists some c1, c2, and c3 in R, where the ci's, so c1, c2, c3, are not equal to 0, such that if, this is, if you call this function f1, this function f2, and this function f3, you have c1 times f1 plus c2 times f2 plus c3 times f3 equals 0. This is if the functions are linearly dependent. So now I'm going to plug in these functions here for f1, f2, and f3. So we have c1 times f1, which is 1, plus c2 times f2, which is 1 minus t, plus c3 times f3, which is 1 plus t minus t squared. And I'm going to set that equal to 0. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to multiply, distribute out the, the constants, and then set them equal to what we have on the right-hand side. So we just have c1 times 1, which is just c1, plus c2 times 1 is c2, plus c2 times negative t, which is negative c2t, plus c3 times 1 is just c3, c3 times t is c3t, minus c3 times negative t squared is negative c3 times t squared. So now, I'm going to group together similar powers of t. So for example, we have here t to the 0, t to the 0, so I'm going to group together all these terms here, like so. So we have the t to the 0 terms, so we have that's just c1 plus c2, and that is equal to 0 because there aren't any of these t to the 0 terms on the right-hand side either. And the t to the 1 terms, so we have here negative c2, and then the other t to the 1 term is just going to have the c3. So negative c2 plus c3 is also equal to 0 because there is no t term on the right-hand side either. And now we have the t squared terms. And we only have one t squared term over here, which is negative c3. So we have negative c3 equals 0. So we, we can see from this that c3 is going to be equal to 0. And if c3 is equal to 0, that means that c2 is also going to be equal to 0 because you get here negative c2 plus c3. And if that's 0, that's plus 0 equals 0. So then you get, therefore, c2 equals 0. And plugging that back in up here, we would get that c1 also equals 0, which is a contradiction because we assumed up here that the ci's, none of them could be, or they could not all be equal to 0. So therefore, we have prove, proven using contradiction um, that these three functions here are linearly independent. So another way to prove that the functions are linearly independent is to use the Ronskian. which is a method that commonly used in um, differential equations and linear algebra. So the Ronskian, the formula for the Ronskian, I will just call it W, and it's the determinant of the following matrix. You have a set of three functions, in this case three functions. Note that the horizontal bars, I mean, excuse me, the vertical bars here denote determinant. So F1, F2, and F3. And on the second line we have the first derivatives, so F1 prime, f2 prime and f3 prime. And on the third line, we have the second derivative. So f1 double prime, f2 double prime, f3 double prime. So what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take these functions and I'm just going to calculate the Ronskian matrix for these functions. So we have w here is going to be equal to, so f1 is equal to 1, f2 is equal to 1 minus t, just bringing this down here, and f3 is equal to 1, plus t minus t squared. So then the first derivative of f1 with respect to t is going to be 0. First derivative of f2 with respect to t is going to be negative 1. 
the first derivative of f3 with respect to t is going to be 1 minus 2t. And the, so the final row of this matrix is going to be second derivative of, or you can just look here in this case, the second derivative of this with respect to t is 0. Second derivative of this with respect to t, or I guess you'd be taking the first derivative of this, but second derivative of this. Uh, is 0, and then the first derivative of this with respect to t is going to be negative 2. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate the determinant of this matrix. So we, can, we have here 1, so we take this times the determinant of negative 1 um, over here, 1 minus 2t, 0, negative 2, minus and then 1 minus t, this is using a cofactor expansion, um, times the determinant of 0, uh, 1 minus 2t, and 0 and negative 2, plus this over here, which is f3, so that's 1 plus t minus t squared, times the determinant 0, negative 1, 0, 0. Okay, so I can just continue taking the determinants over here. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to calculate out these determinants. So we have this is equal to 1 times negative 2 times negative 1 is going to be 2 minus 0 times this is going to be 0 minus 1 minus t times 0, 0 times negative 2 is going to be 0 minus 0 times 1 minus 2t is also going to be 0. So this entire term is, in fact, going to go to 0. And then plus 1 plus t minus t squared times 0 times 0, which is 0, minus 0 times negative 1, which is also 0. So this term here also goes to 0. And we're left with simply 2. So therefore, we have uh, the Ronskian is not equal to 0. And we know that when the Ronskian is not equal to 0, the functions are linearly independent. So therefore, using the Ronskian method, we have just proved that these functions are, this set of three functions are linearly independent. So for more Problem of the Week videos, you can click on our playlist here. To subscribe to our YouTube channel, you can click here. And for more math content and to learn more about our affordable textbooks, you can visit us here at centerofmath.org. Thank you for watching.